What's up Money Tribe? In this video we're taking a look at Palantir. Now Palantir was one of the controversial stocks of 2021. However, it is a brand new year and the market has been correcting quite substantially in the early part of this year. So I'm going to be walking you through my detailed stock screening checklist on the stock. I'm also going to be talking about some of the key metrics that you need to know behind the business. And uh, of course, as always, at the end of this video, we're also going to do some detailed valuations and we're going to let you know what we think the stock is currently worth. So that being said, let's jump in and have a look at the historical pricing over the last year. So looking at the last year, we can see the stock is actually down 48%. Over the last six months, the stock is down 41%. And if we look at the last month, we can see it is down 6.68%. In terms of volatility, the stock has traded up to $30.44 on the 52-week high and down to $11.75 on the 52-week low. Now, moving into our stock sheets, Palantir has an enterprise value of $26 billion. They have a market cap of $28 billion, and that is with positive net equity sitting at $1.5 billion. Now, looking at the current share price, it is trading in that $13 to $14 price band, and the price to sell is currently sitting at 17.26 with a price to book at 11.83. The insider holding is pretty strong sitting at 11.12% and institutions hold about 34% of the stock currently. There is also a growing short ratio out against the stock. In fact, the short interest is currently sitting at 5.69%. There is no dividend on the stock and the free cash flow is positive sitting at 210.6 million. Now, as we move down a little bit further into the year on years, we can see that the uh, stock, of course, has made a lot of improvement over the last trailing 12 months. In fact, so much so that the EPS just turned positive. That being said, the stock is still under a lot of pressure and it is yet to prove any consistency in terms of the actual numbers. And we do also have to note that operating income and net income does still currently remain in the red. Now, as we move down to our stock screener, just very quickly, our stock screener is broken down into four key pillars. The first one is fundamentals. The second one that we're looking at is the debt gearing. The third one is momentum. And the fourth one is growth. Now, just quickly, as we look at the stock screening checklist, the first thing you'll see is that there is no PE ratio on the stock. And that is, of course, because there is negative margin, negative 35.81. So unfortunately, on our first two key fundamental check marks, uh, they are failing. Next, we're moving down to the net equity. This is positive, currently sitting at 1.5 billion. And of course, the dividend cost is less than free cash flow because they currently don't pay a dividend, which means they are scoring check marks in both of those areas. Unfortunately, though, there has been some shareholder dilution over the last while, so no check mark there. Now, as we move down to the debt pillar, we can see that they are managing debt extremely well. The debt to equity is less than 40%, in fact, sitting at 11.71%. The current ratio is uh, greater than one. In fact, very strong, sitting at 4.12. And uh, there is, of course, enough free cash flow, more than 10% to pay down on debt. Now, as we move a little bit further down into our momentum pillar, we can see on top line revenue, they really are doing an exceptionally good job. In fact, if uh, you go up to the year on years, you can see that for the last three years, they have had consistent and consecutive uh, growth year on year. Unfortunately, though, this is not translating into the absolute bottom line at the moment. So they are falling short there. And then when it comes down to the growth pillar, we can see they are, of course, battling once again. If we look at the return on equity, negative 29% return on asset is sitting at negative 12 and uh, that return on invested capital is sitting at negative uh, 128%. So unfortunately, not meeting any of our criteria in terms of 10% growth or more. And then the earnings per share only just turning positive and a very, very small number. So unfortunately, once again, we can't score them there. Now, we're going to quickly move into some of the analyst ratings. We're going to talk about some of the key metrics you need to know behind the company. And uh, then we're going to get into our valuation model. So let's quickly talk about some of the main things you need to know behind the company driving the stock price. We're also going to talk about some of those analyst discussions on the actual pricing. So first of all, in terms of analyst ratings, uh, it's a pretty much a mixed bag of tricks. At the moment, out of six ratings out on the stock, we've got two sell recommendations, three hold and one buy. And uh, the average price consensus is currently sitting at 2160. Now, some of the analyst growth projections, they're projecting out revenue growth of 36.6% over the next uh, three years, and also talking about earnings growth uh, moving up to 39.68%. 
Now, as we move a little bit further down, I just want to quickly touch on some of the revenue breakdown because I think it is important as we get into those valuations to really understand this. So first of all, in terms of the government sector of uh, the business, that is, of course, income derived directly from government, is attributing to about 55% of the total revenue makeup. And uh, commercial, which is, of course, a non-governmental work, is equating to about 44% of the income. And then if you look at the actual geographic breakdown, of course, the US is the predominant market. This is followed closely by the UK, UK, France, and the rest of the world. In fact, the rest of the world is making up a pretty large percentage of that. So good to see that if you combine all of the external markets, that they certainly have got some diversity. In fact, 52% versus 48 against the rest of the world. Now, as we move down to some of the competitive advantages, one of the big things that Palantir has going for it at the moment is that there is a high switching cost, and uh, this makes them a pretty uh, sticky product. So if anybody or any government or any private entity wanted to actually move their, their, their supply to somebody else and wanted to take on a different supplier, it's going to take a lot of cost and a lot of time. And so this is the one advantage that Palantir has. It's almost as if the customers are locked in. Next, they have very, very close government relations. In fact, the U.S. Army and the Department of Defense are their key uh, customers. And, uh, you know, I think this is something that also has a lot of people concerned. But I think this is a really big competitive advantage because it locks in steady income streams for them in the future. Now, talking about some of the risk factors that you need to be aware of. They have a limited number of customers, which of course account for a huge portion of their revenue. We'll be talking about some of those customer numbers in a second, but just keep in mind that you know this is a an enterprise-based business, and so they won't have thousands of customers, but ultimately the top portion of their revenue comes from a very small group of actual customers. So that is something that is a potential risk factor. The other is the fact that their platforms are complex and uh, implementation for new customers is extremely, extremely lengthy. And then uh, they do have uh, some up and coming competition which they could be facing over the next couple of years. A lot of people out there, a lot of businesses really developing in the space quite aggressively. And then in terms of future potential growth catalysts, they are looking at growing the commercial business. They've identified that they need to grow this. Uh, obviously the major portion of the income has come from government work at this point. They have uh, large addressable markets to tap into. There's a lot of need for what it is that they're offering. And they also have diversified investments into various industries. In fact, the big one that everybody spoke about last year was, of course, Bitcoin and crypto. And then uh, also talking about uh, the fact that they have been looking aggressively at gold holdings. Now, the business model is also very focused on expansion. And I think this is the other thing that makes them potentially a really good business long term. Now, that being said, if we move down to some of the statistics, something I just want to point out is that in Q4 of 2020, they basically had 139 customers. And in the last uh, year leading up to quarter three of 21, they've actually managed to grow that to 203. Now, this might not seem like a lot, but if you understand how big those customers are and you understand how much money they pay, uh, it is quite a notable achievement. So certainly their customer base is expanding. And like I mentioned, one of the things they are focused on is uh, increasing their commercial offerings. So now just quickly moving back into our valuation models. First of all, in terms of the free cash flow valuation, the stock is currently trading at a multiple of 132 times free cash flow. That is exceptionally high. In fact, we would normally value out at 10, 20, and 25 respectively which would bring us to a valuation of about two bucks on the intrinsics against free cash flow today. If we move down a little bit further into our DCF model, which is specifically looking at the earnings per share, again, that earnings per share is very small at the moment. And I don't think it is a fair reflection of the stock because of course, you know, they have just turned that number and it really isn't worth mentioning. But having said that, we are coming out at about one buck today. And that is of course using a pretty aggressive DCF model. So now that takes us down to the final verdict and there's a lot to talk about here. So first of all, from a fundamental perspective, the stock still has a long way to go. It is only meeting 40% of our criteria and so it is still in the red in terms of the fundamental checks. In terms of the debt management checks, the company is doing an exceptional job. They meet absolutely every single one of our criteria, giving them a score of 100%. On the momentum side, once again, they've managed to score on the top line revenue. In terms of bottom line revenue, it's not going to happen for a while as far as I can see. 
And I think there is still potentially a lot of losses up ahead. So for that reason, I think momentum is still going to be a challenge up ahead. And that, of course, equates directly into growth. Until they can start hitting the numbers consistently in terms of top line and bottom line revenues, then, of course, the growth factor is just going to be non-existent. That being said, the stock is currently trading at $13.97. If we take a look at our free cash flow evaluation, we're valuing it intrinsically at $2.15 per share. If we look at the DCF model, we're coming out to $1.10. Now, of course, this is purely based on the earnings. So let's just be very precise about that. We are cutting up the earnings in different ways. If we look at the enterprise value, however, and that takes into account the sum of all assets, the sum of all debt, it really looks at probably the close intrinsic value number that you should be focusing on this, at this point because they have got unproven fundamentals at this point. Uh, we are coming out at $14.51 per share, which is actually a little bit higher than the current pricing in the market. Now, the analyst consensus on the stock is $21.60 over the next couple of months. I feel that is extremely bullish. I think that even though they are in a very strong position in terms of having not taken on debt, they're of course expanding their reach quite a bit. There's a lot of new contracts coming online. And certainly if you are interested in investing in the stock, I would encourage you to go and read through some of the contracts that they're signing up and some of the potential revenue streams that are coming in. But we are of course screening the stock very quickly for you guys and I wanna give you uh, my general consensus in terms of whether I think you should be looking at the stock or not. So right now at 15 bucks per share as our potential target over the next 12 months, this means that there is a potential margin of 7.37% in it. Now, honestly speaking, that's just not working for me. I would need to make at least 15 to 20% on a single stock. So for me, looking at this, I would have to buy the stock at $12.75 to meet my personal criteria to make somewhere in the order of 12 to 20 percent and certainly if you're investing into the stock you're obviously looking for at least that return or greater so because of this i have this as a highly speculative play i think until these fundamentals are proven until the company really does improve its fundamentals improves its growth and momentum factors this is going to remain a highly speculative stock and so for that reason uh, i definitely wouldn't in good conscience tell people to go out and simply invest into the stock that being said, if you are looking at a speculative play in your portfolio over the long term, this could potentially do very well for you. And I would encourage you to go and research the company a little bit more. We are, of course, providing a very quick screen, giving you some of the key information that you need to know. And uh, hopefully this points you in the right direction. So with that being said, if you do have any questions, if you do have any comments, get involved in the discussion down below. Let us know if you're enjoying this new format. We are really trying to give you guys as much information in as short a time as possible because we know your time is valuable. And uh, if you would like to download this exact research sheet, uh, there will be a link coming up on your screen shortly. You can also check out some of our other videos in the playlist up on your screen. And we'll see you guys in the next one real soon.